Welcome to video one in the series of how to build the Baja 5 SCSS kit. We're going to start and build the kit directly as it's shown in the manual, page by page, piece by piece. As we start off our build, we're going to be a little bit redundant and we're going to take our time and we're going to show you a little bit about the tools that you're going to need to use and as well as some of the product that you'll need to buy. And these are going to take up the first couple videos. Along with that, we're also, as we get going, we're going to show you how to read the part numbers that are included in the manual and how the trees are set up. So the first couple videos as we start to build may be a little bit redundant and slow. However, as they move on, they're going to pick up in speed and we're just going to do some flat out building. But for the, again, for the first couple, we're going to show you how to properly read the directions as well as choose your pieces and parts and how they're bagged. So the best thing to do is to kick back, relax, and enjoy the video series. In this segment we're going to cover page number five in the manual and basically these are objects that you are going to have to go out and purchase. The SS kit requires that you do get your own electronics which is a good thing because you have the availability of many 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 products on the market to choose from and you can go ahead and build it the way that you would like to. The equipment that is needed is, is pretty minimal and uh, the cost on it is, is really not that much. We're going to go ahead and start off with the radio and we're going to suggest that you use a Spectrum or DSM radio setup on this rather than an AM or an FM unit. There's several different brands out there and the requirements are, are not that great so it doesn't have to be a teeny tiny receiver or whatnot. All that uh, is needed is a two channel or more radio. That way you have your steering control and your throttle control and if you do have a third channel you can use a kill switch or lighting um, a fourth channel makes it even funner if you're going to be adding a lot of additional features later on. The, so that's going to go ahead and cover the radio and the receiver. The next thing we're going to look at is the servo. And with a servo on here, it's a standard size servo, and this is going to be for the throttle and the brake. The steering servo is already included in the kit. Uh, the only requirement is that it is a standard size servo. If you take a look here, it gives you the size. And you can see it's just a regular, everyday RC servo. Uh, the only requirements on that, uh, depending on your radio, is digital. I would suggest getting a digital servo. And it should also have at least 110 inch-pounds of force, or inch, I should say, ounces of force. This one exceeds that by a little bit. This is a high-tech 5645 and it uh, is a very inexpensive servo that uh, we've been using for many many years. However with the Baja more is better as far as torque goes when it comes to the throttle and brake servo. So you can spend as much or as little as you want on the servo again as long as it's a standard size and it has at least 110 ounces of torque. The next thing that we're going to need is going to be an on-off switch and for this particular setup we really only need one pole so basically we're going to have one in and one out as well as the switch and it's a standard size hobby switch. Um, this one was purchased at Killer RC who has a lot of the Baja specific electronics. Uh, very inexpensive and uh, a lot of times if you get a radio, a new radio, it may already have one in the kit, so take a look. Again, you're going to need an on-off switch for the battery. The next thing is going to be the battery itself. This one right here is an HPI battery. It's a 6 volt, 3000 milliamp 
uh, nickel metal hydride which is more than up to the task and it has a Tamiya plug on there. Uh, the Tamiya plug is needed for the radio for the stock setup so no matter what you get you are going to need a Tamiya plug on there. And these are available at any of your fine Baja retail stores. Uh, there are aftermarket batteries that uh, have a higher milliamp rating which means that the, you can keep them turned on longer. Another not that we're going to use many hop-ups in this particular build, we are going to be building it almost completely stock, but the other choice that you have is a LiPo battery or this LiFi battery, which again was picked up from Killer RC. It's much lighter, instead of being 6 volts, uh, it's 6.6, .6, which gives your servos a little bit more power and snap. But again, this is an option and uh, if you're going to build it directly with HPI parts, um, we do suggest that you go out and get their battery pack. A couple other things that you will be needing, and they are all mentioned right here, is you will have to have a battery charger for your battery. And again, depending on what battery you get, is going to depend on what charger you get. And there are many, many, many chargers out there. So choose your battery choose your charger. We are going to frown upon getting a, a wall charger which is just the little nodes that plug into the wall and into your battery. You are much better served and you're going to have a much better performing battery if you do get a standard RC style charger. The other thing that you're going to need is batteries and most likely your receiver will need these batteries. Uh, they're not rec or they're not used anywhere inside the Baja, but they will be for your receiver. That pretty much concludes the page five of the overview on the manual before we get moving on to the next page. So take some time uh, if you have to do a little bit of research, go to your hobby shop, hop on uh, RC large scale or any of the forums and check it out and make sure that you are purchasing the right equipment for your Baja. Remember you have an expensive an expensive item here and you don't want to cheat yourself by using a uh, older technology radio or older technology chargers because that's your direct link from you to your vehicle and without it uh, working properly you can have failure. So again take some time, research your radio and your receivers and your servos and batteries and come up with some good choices. Although we are going to be building this pretty much stock, I did want to introduce you to a few pieces and parts that you may want to purchase before you start your build. Um, they're all relatively inexpensive and they're going to save you a lot of time in the long run as well as money because they are uh, definitely needed products. The first one we're going to talk about are the bearings, and this is the Team Fast Eddy Pro Series bearing. The bearings that come with the kit are adequate, however, there are many places in the Baja where they do use bushings, and we replace the bushings with bearings, and there's also spaces in your differential and in your transmission that are extremely hard to get to and very hard on bearings, and the Team Fast Eddy bearing kit uh, is going to address those problems and save you a lot of grief in the long run. So we do uh, recommend and we are going to use the Team Fast Eddy Pro Series bearing kit in the build. The next product we're going to use is the Team Fast Eddy dog bone and transmission grease. And it's an extremely thick and tacky grease and it's developed specifically for the Baja to use in the dog bones as well as the transmission. The kit does contain grease, however it's an assembly grease and is not nearly as effective nor does it last near as long as the Team Fast Eddy dog bone and transmission grease. We're going to use an assortment of shims. This is the Pro Series shim kit which has 30 separate shims included and we're going to use those on the wheels, we're going to use them on the clutch bell, we're going to use them in many, many, many places on the Baja. And if nothing else, this is uh, definitely a needed item because they're, during the manufacturing process, some of the tolerances can 
can get pretty out of whack in, in some key areas. And if you can take the play out of those areas, then you're going to be, uh, again, saving yourself money in the long run. Uh, steering post shims, which is this kit right here, uh, on many of the vehicles, again, during the, the process of, of manufacturing, some of the tolerances are lost, and you can get quite a bit of slop in the steering. So the steering post shim kit is going to be used in this build as well. There are three different sizes of hinge pin shims. We have a one millimeter, a half millimeter, and a point two millimeter set. And again, there's a, a large amount of, of play in the uh, hinge pins, and this will take them out and it will keep you from popping C clips out in the field. And again, very inexpensive and something you should consider during your original build. The next and the last thing we're going to be using here is a header pipe clamp. And that is a definite needed object. Um, we will show you how to put the stock clamp on. However, most of them uh, are extremely difficult and people thank us. <laughs> we get thank you letters on this, this part almost daily. Um, it's quite simple and it makes putting the tuned pipe together onto the header very, very easy. So again, these are not mandatory items, but they are items that you will see us use, and they're best installed during your original build.